Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman, and welcome back to Quantum Field Theory of Students' Perspective. In this one of our first deeper dives or deeper looks at a particular theoretical issue, I'd like to talk about the covariance of the Schrodinger equation under Galilean transformation. The reason why I want to discuss this is that on page six of Mark Srednecki's book, he discusses transformations between reference frames and implies that the um, scalar transformation is what you want if you have a one component object. But if you look at the errata for the book, they point out that this is only one of the simplest choices, that in fact there are other choices, and that if you choose the other choices, you won't have the uh, usual probability conservation that we expect in non-relativistic quantum mechanics. And we know, we kind of expect this in quantum field theory because the uh, Klein-Gordon equation, we saw that it's, it's very hard to have a, um, it's, almost, it's impossible to construct a conserved positive definite probability current. So we abandoned that inter interpretation in quantum field theory. But just to show you how we can have other kinds of transformations that are not as trivial as the scalar transformation, will work, we'll work with the Schrodinger equation under a Galilean transformation and show that um, we get a different kind of and more interesting type of transformation. So I'd like to start with the um, Galilean transformation, which is much simpler than a Lorentz transformation, if not as beautiful. As we all know, it's very simply given by x equal x prime plus v t prime t equal t prime. And we can see this if we have a reference frame with x and t, and we imagine we have a boosted reference frame, boosted with velocity v, labeled with coordinates x prime and t prime. And um, just for um, for later use, the inverse transformation is, of course, very trivial. X prime equal x minus vt, and t prime equal t. Now, when I get a, uh, a new transformation, one of the first things I want to calculate is the Jacobian of the transformation. And the Jacobian is simply given by the absolute value of the matrix of the partial derivatives. So that's the partial of x with respect to x prime, partial of x with respect to t prime, partial of t with respect to x prime, partial of t with respect to t prime. And using the transformations, this is very easy to calculate. 1, v, 0, 1, and this is equal to 1. And this is what we expect, because we know under Galilean transformations, volumes don't change. And although this is the space-time volume, we know that time is the same for everybody, so the time intervals are the same. This implies that the volume intervals are the same. And this is what we want, because imagine we have a box, and we want to know if there's a particle in the box. In one reference frame, we're going to calculate this as the integral of the absolute value of psi of x comma t squared dx. And the other reference frame, we're going to calculate it as the integral the absolute value of psi of x prime comma t prime dx prime absolute value squared. We want these to be equal and this will imply, since we can take the intervals as small as we want, that the absolute value of psi squared is equal to the absolute value of psi prime squared. And you might think that this leads to what we were doing in quantum field theory, that psi equals psi prime. But it actually doesn't, because we can have a phase here. So what we really have, we really are, are going to get is that psi of x comma t is going to be equal to e to the i f psi prime x prime comma t prime. 
where f is real and is a function is a real function of the coordinates. So the Schrodinger equation, if we write it down, is minus h bar squared over 2m. We're going to work in one dimension here. The extra dimensions for using the Laplacian won't give us anything new. And I'm going to write w for the potential instead of v because I'm using v, v for the um, using v for the velocity. Everything here is a function of x comma t. And this is the standard time dependent Schrodinger equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute psi in terms of psi prime in this equation, have the derivatives in terms of the new coordinates, and see if we get the same equation, or at least see what happens. So to do this, we need to do the partial derivatives. And let's work that right now. They're very simple. The partial with respect to x is equal to the partial with respect to x prime times the partial x prime with respect to x. This is just a standard first, second year multivariable calculus learned a long time ago. And this ends up being the partial with respect to x prime. And then the partial with respect to t is equal to partial with respect to x prime, the partial of x prime with respect to t plus the partial with respect to t prime, partial of t prime with respect to t. This is going to equal to minus v times the partial with respect to x prime plus the partial with respect to t prime. So this equation here is nothing other than the co-moving derivative that you might have seen in fluid mechanics and elsewhere in classical mechanics. So in the next video we're going to do the um, brute force math, math, that's all it is. And we'll come back and we'll substitute using these derivatives and this expression for psi. And f over here will be a function of um, x prime and t prime. And we'll see if we can get the uh, Schrodinger equation in the primed coordinate system. And if we do, then we'll have covariance. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.